Hello scholars. So today you're gonna need your water, your bowl of water or your cup, your napkin, your paintbrush, your watercolor brush, your watercolors, a pencil, and markers. If you want, you can use crayons instead of markers. I'm going to use markers for this um, assignment, but the crayons would also be cool because you can do a wax resist method like we learned in a previous lesson. That's not necessary. So first we're going to draw our picture. And it's going to be a horizon, a sunset. So you're going to take your pencil and you want to create waves in the water. Waves look like this. Then they come back around like this. You can make more than one. But you only want to stay at the bottom half of the paper. Right? And then you're going to do waves just going up and down, up and down, up and down. And you want to keep those kind of beneath the waves that are lifting up or around it. They can be big waves and small ones. I'm doing this in pencil. And then now, because I see how I want it done, I'm going to take a blue marker. You can do blue or purple. Either would make sense and go around your wave as neatly as you can. Go around your wave. Go around your wave. The good thing about doing it in pencil first is knowing if you want to change it and how you want it set up. I like this setup. And then I'm just gonna go over the lines that I drew, <clears throat> the wavy lines that I drew for waves. Make sure, like, if you see places you can fill more in, you do. But you want them a little spaced apart so that you can see the difference from one to another. I think I'm gonna take a second, and you can too. I'm going to use blue, I'm sure. Just let the paint soften like we usually do. I'm definitely going to use brown. Probably going to use some green. Just put it on all of them. You can have a little fun with the watercolors. Just soften them. I haven't used these in a while, so I want to make sure they're ready when I'm ready to paint. Drop the water in there, and it'll do the rest for you. And dry your brush and let it sit on the napkin. And finish making your waves. If you wanted, you can do blue and purple. <clears throat> They're both dark colors. But just remember, there might be a color you use a little more when you paint. And if you use purple, for instance, you don't want to make too many purple waves because they'll get lost. But if you're using a lot of purple, the blue waves won't get lost. So just decide what you'll use more than the other. So now, so now behind the sun, I'm just gonna move the paint out my way for a second so you guys can see better. Sorry. So now behind the sun, we're gonna have mountains. So 
take your pencil and you just make large mountain shapes. A lot of times they look like rocks, right? But don't make them too high. You only want them to go about halfway up the paper. Because behind the mountain, you're gonna make a big sun. It's like a half circle and make it stop behind the mountains because it's a sunset. And then from the outside of the circle to the edge of the paper, we're gonna make lines. You can use your ruler if you'd like, if you really want them even. I'm just freehanding how I do them. Okay, you can make them very even and neat. If you like. Okay. So I am going to do a, a thin outline of the mountain tops. Making it thin by using the edge of my marker, the tip. I want these things to look very separated, like with thick lines. If you don't want that, you don't have to outline it. I do want that. <clears throat> and then I'm going to go into the lines with the red. And I'm only doing that because all the other colors are going to be very light. So the red will be a nice contrast. Move it so that I can reach all the other ones. The word horizon means that it goes across, you see? I always hear people say across the horizon. You know, vertical because of blinds up and down. Horizon, you always think about, well, I always think about the sunset. One of my favorite places to watch the sunset is Seaside Park. When it's open, it, you can sit by the water and just watch the sun go down. You see all the different colors in the sky. It's very, very pretty. I suggest when things get back to normal, if you haven't done that, you should. And if you have done that, you're like, mm-hmm, that's right, Miss Lawton. So now, we have the water, the hills, and the sun. So what I'm gonna do now is take my brush and my paint. I'm gonna wet my brush nice and wet. And remember, we use the top. You see how I was able to just activate it again? I have that blue. And look, and remember, you might want, if you have lines that you can see, I'm not that concerned with it, but if you are, you can erase the lines before you start to paint. You don't really want to do it too far after because it'll, um, you get eraser in your paint. I don't really want that. So, I'm just gonna, I don't need this to be too perfect. You can wet the paper, do wet on wet, and then drop some blue in. See? It'll hold against the the marker. Don't go too far up. It doesn't have to be a perfect line, but you don't want it to um, go too far into the mountains. Add a little blue and add a little water. And then keep it nice and light. That way, if I want it to be darker, I can just make it darker. 
and then say drags. Fun and relaxing, so don't stress yourself out. Just rock to your music and paint in your water. Mm. Get all the white spaces filled with blue. Remember, water is kind of rough when it's wavy, so it doesn't have to be all neat and perfect. It could just be rough, wavy water. Get in here. Now with this one, you want to leave a little bit neat. Yeah, just a little bit of neatness around here because you're gonna go in with the brown for the mountains. I'm gonna shade a little, a little dark blue underneath the wave. Give it a little shading. So you can tell it's rising up. This would be a good place to use some of your purple too. Oh, that's very dark. It's okay. I can still go in here. Let's smooth it out. Smooth it out. Here we go. And you're gonna wanna do that all the way across. Just get some depth. As it gets closer to you, it can be a little darker. It's okay if it's on top of the yellow, it's just gonna be a weird purple. So we just wanna add a little contrast. I think I want purple purple. Yeah, I really like bright colors. It's my preference. But if it's not yours, it's fine too. I enjoy it. Nice bright colors. Just gonna add purple in here. You see how it just covers nice because I'm keeping it really wet and going into all the spaces that I would like to see purple. Then if I decide later I want to add any more color to it, I can. But for now, I'm going to go to the mountains. I think I want to do the top brown and the bottom green. So I'm going to get the top of my mountains. I'm going to reactivate our brown from before. And then we're going to get right in here. Try to be, see I went out a little, I'll try to stay in the lines here. And I'm only doing the tops with the brown. So 
so just be mindful that you want to use another color in here so don't go all the way down get right in here if you need a point it comes back to a point because it's a watercolor brush And be careful not to get your hand into the paint at the bottom. Because if you rest your hand on your paper and the bottom's still wet, you're going to mess up your picture. So just be careful. <clears throat> now here, I'm going to get in here a little bit at the top. And then that's how I'll know how far down to go because I want the bottom to be green. That's one more mountain. Just like so. And rinse your brush out really well. So green. And color nice and gently where the water meets the hills. If you need water, make it wet so it blends a little more. See? And you'll have green bottoms brown tops. Put the paint down, put some water on your brush, and just spread it around. Take your time, and we're going to do these. Remember, this has the wave going up, so you want to be very careful. And I add a little tiny drop of water so I can spread it out easier. Make sure you get all the spaces that should be green. Here we go. Now we have our hills. Then, gotta move some of this stuff over. We're gonna do the sun. Make sure your brush is cleaned out because you just use green and you don't want your colors to get too mixed up. And then let it be wet and go into your yellow. You do not have to dry it. Just let it be wet and go into your yellow. And give yourself a pretty yellow sun. You can add water to spread it a little easier. Careful, you don't go too far into your mountain. But even if you did, it would look sort of like the sun is beaming on the mountain, so that's okay. Let your brush be wet. And then color your whole sun yellow. Use the point of your brush so you can get the details nice and gently. Yeah, now make your brush very, 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 very wet. Rinse it out, get some orange. And then you can add orange if you'd like. Sort of let it fall where it goes. Make it wet with the water. And if you wet it, It'll spread itself around. Sometimes the yellow is already wet. It's a really cool effect. Put some orange down. Put some yellow after. And have a bright orange and yellow sun. 
<clears throat> and then I would just go into each section one after the other this I want to be orange so I'm gonna do wet on wet I'm gonna wet the whole area out of the way and then I'm gonna put some orange in let it spread itself around and then help it out that might be an effect you want if you just drop it you can leave those or you can move them around So because I did this one orange, I want to do every other one orange. You don't have to, but I'm gonna. So I'm gonna go in here, make that orange. I'm gonna wet it again. Make this one orange. This one's smaller, so I didn't go over it in water first. Cause that can get a little messy. Then I'm gonna come here Put the water down. Just then, um, I skipped one box. I went to the next one. We're gonna do wet. Drop the orange down. Wet on wet, and just gently move the orange around so it fills in all the white spaces. Here, remember the brown is probably still wet so as you get close to the mountain I would just let that be a little dry so you can control it better get some orange see if I let it be dry it won't go into the mountains but everything else can be wet and you just move the paint around places it puddles you can leave it it doesn't matter I just like to swish it around then I'm gonna clean my brush very 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 well and make my yellow wet <clears throat> you can wet the paper and do it or you can do dry on wet I'm doing I mean wet on dry I'm doing wet on dry here because it's so close to the mountain and the mountain is brown. But up here, doesn't matter because it's similar colors. But I wouldn't put the water too close to the orange because see how it can bleed in? And then I'm gonna put some yellow paint. I'm gonna wet it. I wanna pick that orange up off the paper. That's why I did that. That's one good thing about watercolor. You can pick up the colors where you messed up a little. If you look at your picture, if you look at your picture and decide there's places that you want to add more colors, that's fine. Sometimes you want a little bit, bit more dark blue. It can make your waves more pronounced. And 
this is all a choice. But it does give it a lot of <clears throat> a lot of depth. Just practice your shadows and practice having fun. Don't be stressed out. Enjoy it. I think because the bottom of the water is a little darker, I'll go in here and make it a little darker. Yep. Here we go. And then you have a beautiful horizon. Something to look forward to this summer. And remember, every artist signs their name in their work. So people know that you did it. I always do the bottom right corner. I do my name and I do the year. So stay safe, keep your people safe, wash your hands and stay inside, and enjoy the company of your family. And I can't wait to see you guys again at LifeBridge. Can you see it? There we go. Later. <laughs>